And now, Lifestyles Unlimited presents the Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Over the next hour, we unfold your map to financial freedom. You'll learn how to retire through investing in single family and multifamily real estate. You'll learn how to create cash flow and build wealth so you can have the time and money to live the lifestyle you want. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. It's another edition of Tell Al Tuesday, and I've asked Michael to join me. Now, Michael is somebody who helps a lot of other people. As a matter of fact, he spent many, many years in a career where he serves as a financial planner. He's, he's helping other people that have not discovered real estate how to at least try and be competitive for retirement. But here's the thing. Michael realized that what he was doing for retirement, it, it wasn't quite getting him to where he was trying to get to. And he realized that he needed some real estate in his portfolio in order to, to make up the difference. So Michael became a member of Lifestyles Unlimited. And during his journey, he has decided that he wants to be a single family investor. He's invested in single family assets. Now, here's, here's something very interesting about Michael that you may not know. Chances are you don't know much about Michael because we haven't gotten into his story. But at the end of the day, Michael lives in a place called Florida, but he invests in a place called Georgia. Yeah, Florida to Georgia. Now, I asked him before we went on the show, I said, hey, by the way, how, how far away from where you live are the properties that you're buying? And he said, well, off the top of my head, it's about 550 miles. But if I choose to go visit the properties, there's 10 flights a day from where I live to where I've got to get to. And then I just grab a rental car and then I can go check out the properties. But at the end of the day, Michael has learned how to invest in real estate the correct way, the Lifestyles Unlimited way. And in doing so, he doesn't necessarily have to go check on his properties because he's built a team of people around him that are doing the majority of the heavy lifting. Now, if he gets the bug and he wants to go check out his properties, he is free and able to do that. I mean, it is it is not something we prevent our Lifestyles Unlimited members from doing. We just advise you that, you know, if, if you don't need to go check it out, why waste your time? Because at the end of the day, you've got people helping you along the way. So what I want to do today is I want to get into Michael's head. I want you to understand how a financial planner has decided that real estate investing is the modality that's going to help him cross over the threshold to real estate retirement. And more importantly, he's going to achieve financial freedom by taking advantage of what real estate has to offer him. So with no further ado, let me invite Michael to the show. Michael, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Doing great, Al. Thanks for inviting me on. It's nice to be here. So did I get the backstory correct? I mean, you've been a financial planner for, for more than a minute, correct? Yeah, I, I've actually been a financial planner since the late 90s. Started my career back in the mid-90s, and I've been a fiduciary for the past 25 years. Okay, fiduciary. What, what exactly does that mean? Well, a fiduciary is somebody that at its core principles – puts the needs of others ahead of the needs of myself. You know, truly doing the work that is important to who I serve. You know, and I'll expand on that by saying, you know, in, in my industry, in the financial services industry, there's two types of people. There's people that will tell you that they are right. And then there's people that will tell you that you are right. And the people that say they are right are nothing but well-paid salesmen. The people in my industry that tell you that you are right become a thinking partner with you and help you grow and do what's in your best interest. And that's how I've been operating for the past 25 years. So you, you're dialed into this concept of helping other people. You didn't necessarily need Lifestyles Unlimited to explain to you that helping other people is part of the key to success. No, not at all. Not at all. It's been ingrained for a long time. Okay. So what, what happened in your life that caused you to realize that what you were doing as a financial planner may or may not be getting you to where you're trying to get to when it comes to financial freedom? I was getting older, Al, you know, and looking at cycles that the financial services industry go through, you know, in 2001, big crash, 2008, 
big crash. You know, recently another decline of a varying magnitude. And I'm at that point in my career where I'm looking at, you know, potentially, let's call it 10 more years to go of, you know, good active service. And I can't afford to let a sequence of bad returns derail my retirement. You know, if if I turn around and I've got three years to go and the financial markets head south, that could ruin me. It could ruin the the long-term outlook. So a few years back, you know, it was, okay, what else is out there that I have more control over, you know, that could provide stability, you know, from a financial standpoint. And, you know, I've, I've taken care of real estate people for years and to them, I'm subordinate. I will never be greater than the fact that they invest in a lot of real estate. And I acknowledge that and I admired that, you know, and I, but for the longest time, I, I didn't want to be a landlord. I didn't, I didn't think it was something I, I would enjoy doing and until I started joining Lifestyles. And then that all changed. So did you have a an inherent fear to being a landlord? I would say you know, just an inherent feel, fear of, you know, dealing with individuals that you don't personally know. And that just comes from who I am and what I'm doing. Because when I take care of people, I usually do a deep dive into who they are and what they want and what their what their goals are and so you know dealing with people from essentially a transactional standpoint wasn't as attractive to me but after having a conversation with numerous people that have done it successfully you know it slowly gave me more confidence it turned out to be a godsend so how did you how did you find lifestyles unlimited my original intent was to buy a vacation property, either on a beach, not in Florida, or even in a foreign country, uh, one that I could utilize personally, but also rent out when I'm not using it. You know, the the common, you know, rent it while I'm not using it and it'll pay for itself kind of deal. And at the time, January 22, you know, I have, daughters, one still in college, one graduated a few years ago. And the only way I could track them was by Instagram as to what they were doing every day at one point. And while I was scrolling through Instagram, I saw a picture of David Fisher and Lifestyles Unlimited with the statement that how I, you know, I turned $70,000 into 10 million in real estate. And I clicked on it and led me to the Lifestyles portal and I started investigating from there, you know, that I took the, the one night free talk that they provide and joined FFP right then and there. The gentleman that I was giving the talk, you know, was really good, honest, down to earth, salt of the earth kind of guy. And so I started, I joined FFP and got in the gate of the organization and started doing all my homework and started doing all the research. One of the things that I learned very quickly was that the biggest value from lifestyles is knowledge and people. And so I started calling people from all around the country. Now I knew nothing at that time. I was still, I was not the smartest man in any room. And I went down to the lifestyles meetup here in Miami and unbeknownst at the time, there were some really big heavy hitters in that group. And here I come walking in. I've been a member for a couple of weeks. I know nothing. And these were guys that were willing to have a conversation with me. And so continued reaching out to people here, Georgia, Texas. And at that time, back in 2022, Expo was in March out in Houston. And I turned to my wife and I said, you know what? I go, I have to go out there and take a look and see if this thing is for real. And so I ended up going to Expo, being a member for just two months. And the biggest key moment was on day two, I walked out of the convention center in downtown. I called my wife. I said, we're buying homes, and we're going to be buying homes in Texas. I just want you to know. (laughs) Man, Expo had that impact on you, huh? Yeah, it really did. I mean, there, there was, you know, thousands of people there. And they were all good people, Al. They were willing to have a conversation with you. 
And I found John Horn, who did my first ever exposure to it on the very first day. And we went and had dinner that night together. And pretty much he laid out everything that they would do. I laid out everything that I was thinking. And within 48 hours, I was hooked. Did, did your wife think you had lost your mind? Pretty much. She still wants nothing to do with it, Al. Because really? it's all on me at the moment. And not, not because she's not interested, but you know, as much as I've shown her success already over the past couple of years, it's not her cup of tea, but she trusts me implicitly. And she knows that I would do nothing to harm her or our family. And, you know, eventually she, she's enjoying the fruits of my labor right now. Let's put it that way. Oh, I bet. You know, in, in, in you're talking to somebody who's married to somebody very similar to the person you're married to. When when I became a member of Lifestyles Unlimited and, and told Tina that, hey, this is what we're doing and we're changing the trajectory of our lives. You know, she was very supportive, but she was very, hey, that's that's on you, buddy. You handle that. I will I will tell you. It took four years until investments that we had made came back full circle and she saw the checks. Now, now she's a believer. Now she likes going to the events. Now she likes hanging out with the fellow Lifestyles Unlimited members. Now she likes doing the things that, that I like doing with Lifestyles Unlimited. So I'm, I'm here to tell you there, there, is an, there is an exit strategy for you that you're going to like. Well, I'm looking forward to it, you know, and, and I'm bringing her along as best I can um, at her own pace. And, you know, I'm building something for the long term, you know. And so as long as I continue doing what I'm doing and she continues to be open to the conversation about what's going on, we're going to be just fine. Yeah, you guys are going to be just fine. I'm, I'm actually looking at your portfolio, and I'm, I'm pretty impressed. So when we do, well, let's do this. When we come back from the break, let's, let's get into this portfolio and the why. Stick around. Got questions? Call Lifestyles Unlimited at 855-497-4335. The Real Estate Investor Radio Show continues next. Lifestyles Unlimited member Chad on the life-changing rewards of real estate investing. Whenever you have residents coming in thanking you for taking what was dull and drab and turning it around, making their lives better, that's definitely a blessing. Become a life changer today with Lifestyles Unlimited. Text the word radio to 88007. That's radio to 88007. Join for just $297, a 60% off savings. Lifestyles Unlimited. Text radio to 88007. Creating the lifestyle you've always wanted. You're hearing Lifestyles Unlimited's Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome back to the second half of the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. My name is Al Gordon. I'm joined by Michael, and together we're working on your financial freedom. Now, some of you may be stepping back and saying, wait a minute, how does, how does Michael know anything about my financial freedom? How, how can Michael help me? And here's how Michael's going to help you. He's going to share with you information that no one else is interested in sharing with you. In other words, he's going to talk about real estate assets that he's acquired, he's put into his portfolio, and they are doing some significant things for him. As a matter of fact, he's he's got three single family assets currently under his control, and he has a goal to get to 30 single family assets. So what we're going to do in this segment is we're going to talk to him about those assets that he's acquired. And we're going to talk to him a little bit about his goal setting. And, and you know what, I'm just going to stop talking because Michael's got all the good information. So, so Michael, tell me about the very first asset that you took down as a Lifestyles Unlimited member. I mean, it must have been the easiest asset ever, right? Just, just so you know, I'm actually right in the middle of finishing up number four. And we can talk about that if you'd like as well. Oh, excellent. So you've got one more than I even thought you had. But yeah. So my, my very first deal, you know, I joined Lifestyles in January of 22. And my very first deal was about five months later. Uh, real interesting. You know, I spent the time identifying areas that I wanted to invest in. And then I started building my team just like it's taught. But on my very first deal, you know, there, there were a lot of rookie mistakes made and, you know, a lack of 
knowledge and experience shone brightly because it was a wholesale deal, you know, and I put my $5,000 down and I thought, you know, this is going to go easy, piece of cake, right? I learned everything. Not even close because it took me three to four weeks to close a wholesale deal that was on life support at least three times. And the final time I was sitting in a hotel room in Macon, Georgia on a Friday, I figured, you know, for my first deal, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to put eyes on it. I'm going to sign in person and all that great stuff. I'm excited about doing it. Well, unfortunately, one of the, appra- the, the final appraisal came through the night before, late, and it didn't come anywhere close to what we were expecting which was detrimental to all the numbers. And when I woke up in the morning and got off a plane and went to Macon, and the conversation was I was going to actually lose money doing this deal. And for several hours, I was talking with, you know, my mentor, Isaac. I was talking with the guys in Florida. I know the guys in Georgia that have built reputations. And at one o'clock in the afternoon, I was at a point where on my very first deal, I shut it down and I closed it out. I wasn't going to do it because I was going to lose money going into it. And Dell's number one credo is you don't lose money doing a deal. And so the the equity just wasn't there. And at about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I get a call from a local number that I didn't recognize. The seller of the house actually tracked me down and found me. And they closed that morning. They're like, what do you mean you're not closing? I'm like, and I'm giving them the story. I'm like, this is why I'm not closing. I go, I'm losing money, and I can't lose money going in on a deal. Well, we ended up getting together that Saturday morning and over at the house and hammered out the deal without without anybody else involved. You know, still, still ended up going into the deal, losing a little bit on equity, you know, but my cash on cash return was around a 15% which is, you know, a great target for me. And since that time, you know, the return on equity has gone gotten up to about 65% over the past 2 years. My cash on cash return is over 16 and it's turned out to be a great house. You stuck to your guns, you stuck to what you were taught to do. You're willing to walk away. I mean, would would you've lost any money had you walked away from that deal? Sure, I would have lost my $5,000. But you know, I, I was willing to take a five thousand dollar lesson on do what what it means to do a good deal or a bad deal, than get into what essentially could be a bad deal. And so, you know, the, the conversations I had with like these lifestyles ambassadors, like Josh in Miami, you know, he eventually told me he's like, listen, the equity will come. He goes, you can get into it, and you know, with minimal equity loss, but you'll make that up over over time. And he was absolutely right. He was. So how how's that asset performing for you today? I mean, have you made that equity back and then some? Yep, sixty five percent return on equity, sixteen point three percent cash on cash return right now. Oh, it almost sounds like a a good double, maybe possibly a triple. I mean, considering you were going to walk away from it. Yeah, you know, but it's it, it was a good it was a good deal. It wasn't a great deal, and at the time, I just wasn't I didn't know enough to say you know one way or the other which way I should go. You know, and I, I will tell you that that Friday I had so many conversations with everybody and I'm I'm going across every spectrum. You know, should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? Why would I do it? You know, it versus, you know, I came up here to do a deal and I'm going to walk away. Which one's the best thing for me right now? And at the time, you know, you walk away and you know what? The universe had different plans for me. They wanted me to buy that house and that's what happened. I, I think it's it's great. I mean, you're you're taught to stick to your guns. The fact that the seller came out of the blue and retraded with you, and obviously the seller was motivated. They wanted to get the property sold. They didn't want you walking away. Um, were were you able to come in at a? I, I'm I'm assuming a lesser price. In other words, uh, you were able to retrade the the sales price down a little bit. Yeah, we had the sales price come down a little bit. The the key in that equation was it was a wholesale deal, and the seller's wholesaler wasn't telling them anything that was going on. The seller had no idea what was happening. 
And so that next morning when I went out and I explained everything to him on what was going on and he was shocked, you know, he made his wholesaler reduce the amount of money he gets. You know, our realtor took a little bit of a haircut and the price came down a little bit and got it to a manageable place where my return on equity was like a negative $2,000. And I figured at that point, it's either lose 5,000 or do the deal and lose 2,000. Let's do the deal. So do you think you would have had that same result if you didn't have all these people on your team? No, not at all. I mean, that's the key. There, there, there wasn't an issue at that time that I didn't have somebody to turn to, you know, and, and, and it's due to the extensive network of, you know, ambassadors all over the country, the mentors, you know, and, and the lifestyles, realty people who are in aligned with everything that we're trying to do. You know, I, I didn't have any problem worrying about getting support or advice. I was just worried about getting enough support and advice so I can make the best educated decision for me. And I think you did everything that you're taught to do as a Lifestyles Unlimited member. Was deal number two as as crazy as deal number one? Not even close. You know, deal number two uh, was another wholesale deal that was shown to me. And because of everything that I went through, the experience on the first one, I made the decision in five minutes to buy the house. So how much how much time are you spending on your real estate? I mean, you're 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 gainfully employed as a financial planner, so I know that takes up a good portion of your your available time. But but how much time do you actually spend on real estate, say per week? Two hours, maybe three, and that that doesn't really consist of managing the properties because I I manage my own properties. You know, and that that hours I spent really are doing homework and research on where my next deal may be, even to the point that my general contractor right now is actually sending me deals because when he comes across homes that might be a good fit, he'll send them to me. So I, I really, you know, I, I can't ask for much more than that. So you can't you can't help but be on a glide path to getting to your goal of 30 single family homes when you've got all these people like sending you opportunity. You know, in, in real estate, everybody knows goes in cycles. And right now in the area that I'm owning, you know, I'm in a good cycle. Will it last forever? Probably not. You know, I hope it does. You know, and, you know, we, we, I've already started looking at other areas around the country as potential next steps. But what's holding me back from moving out of where I'm at in Georgia is I've got a really good process going right now and I'm just going to enjoy it as long as I possibly can. Yeah. Speaking of Georgia, I mean, I know you live in Southern Florida and you bought homes in, in Georgia. Why, why Georgia? Why not Southern Florida? Well, because Southern Florida's real estate market is an anomaly. You know, the, the entire world wants to come live here in South Florida and my family's been here since 1952, so I have a really big bias against real estate, and these people are paying exorbitant numbers for properties that I know how much they cost when they were built, and I wouldn't pay anything close to what the market's asking for right now. So the, the goal was to go find areas that, you know, I, I live where you want to live, invest where it's best to invest. And at this moment, George is finding me the best return on my investments. Now, I will tell you, and I've told people this, I have no idea how I ended up in Macon, Georgia. <laughs> you know, all, all I did was I was, I was looking for places that number one, if I needed to, I could easily get to, you know, and, and you know, Houston and Dallas is a two to two and a half, three hour plane ride. Atlanta is a lot quicker. And at the time, you know, LU was just building out Georgia. So I'm like, you know, why don't I start looking at areas that they are still building out? Houston's, you know, been developed for decades. Dell owns that city. So does everybody else there. And so I started looking at areas that people weren't looking at. And at the time I started, Atlanta was up and coming and Macon was just getting their footing. And so I thought to myself, you know, why don't I go to a market where they are trying to build out 
where the opportunity for other LU members isn't as pervasive and they're not fishing in my pond if I had a really good pond to fish in. And so, you know, I found a good one in Macon. I found great people to deal with. And it led to the number two, it led to number three, and now I'm on number four. And tell me about number four. What's what's number four position to do for you? Well, number four is actually turning out to be my best deal so far. You know, it, it was an MLS deal. It was getting a little stale. Um, and so we went in there and offered a very low amount on the house. And it was a corporate owner. And so we just incrementally upped our offer, and they eventually said, fine, we'll take it. They want it out. And the great thing about that is is the appraisal value came out well above what we were expecting. And I closed on that April 24th. And using hard money, the first time I used lifestyles finance, it cost me $13,000 to buy the house. And... With, with that, you know, coming in well below what my anticipated budget for getting in the house is, I've been able to make capital improvements well above and beyond what I was expecting to. And so what the, what's end up going to happen is I'm going to get probably about 120% return on my equity right from day one. Now, here's the great part. The great part is my rehab is going to be finished today, and I've got a tenant ready to move in in two days from now. So I'm going to go from closing on April 24th to in less than a month having my rehab done and a tenant in there starting to cash flow. And my cash flow is going to be around 15% cash on cash return. Now that right there is a home run for me. That is a home run. I mean, it sounds like you've got this this whole real estate investing thing dialed in and dialed in very well. It's been fun. You know, and some days you wake up and you're and you look in the mirror and I'm like, how is this happening to me? And, you know, it just comes from doing the work, understanding what it is that I'm trying to achieve and not deviating from that. You know, it, the thing is between house number three and house number four, it's been almost a year. I haven't bought anything in a year, which I was getting the itch about six months ago. But I was offering on deals that or a little bit out of my lane simply because I thought I needed to buy a house, but that wasn't the case. And so I've learned that as much as I think everything's a great deal, if it's not the great deal that lines up with what I'm trying to do, there's going to be another one tomorrow. And then there's going to be another one that day after that, if if that one doesn't work. So, you know, it's, it's everything that lifestyles teaches just provides confidence, you know, the knowledge, the intellectual capital from being able to turn to whoever I need whenever I have a problem, it's been great. That's been the best value. Well, Michael, I, I just got to salute you. I got to say thank you very much for not only being on the show, but but sharing the insight to your real estate investing journey. I know somebody has learned something from you today, and that, to me, is the most important thing that we can do as Lifestyles Unlimited members, not only for our fellow Lifestyles Unlimited members in the community, but for those people that ought to be a part of the community. If you want to do what Michael's doing, you want to do what I'm doing, you want to do what the 50,000 members of Lifestyles Unlimited are doing, go to lifestylesunlimited.com, sign up for a free workshop, and let's get you going. The information and opinions you hear on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show are those of the hosts, guests, and callers. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.